all protocols be observed, that distinguished leadership, uh, honorable friends, colleagues, and comrades. Good morning. My name is Tori Jenkins. I'm the chairperson of the Tara Restorative Justice Forum based at the Center for African Studies at the University of Cape Town. I also speak to you as a High Commissioner of the Gori Naikona Khoikhoi Traditional Indigenous Council, who has power of attorney of 22 San and Khoi groups that have entered into litigation against the Western Cape Government, the City of Cape Town, and a private developer called Lisbeth Property Trust, contesting a land which is considered of uh, extraordinary significance to uh, First Indigenous communities, land which holds intangible and tangible heritage resources. It is a sensitive um, riverine system, a floodplain, which currently is being threatened by 150,000 square meters of concrete bulk and uh, desecration environmentally, as well as a permanent threat to its extraordinary heritage resources for the purposes of building an Amazon.com headquarters on this particular terrain. The particular terrain that we are talking about, which is contested, is one that is earmarked as a epicenter of liberation and resistance. It is where the first wars of liberation were fought, first against the Portuguese on the 1st of March, 1510. It is where land was stolen for the very first time by the Dutch East India Company, who had gifted this land to its freeburgers, its employees, in 1657, using Roman Dutch law and title deeds to justify indigenous land theft. It is from this terrain, too, <clears throat> that the colonizer Jan van Riebeck put up a dividing hedge, a palisaded fence that moved across all along a sacred river called the Lisbeth. Once this fence had been put up, it became a frontier zone. And because the Khoi Khoi <clears throat> were fighting against the occupation by the Dutch at that time, whose intrusion was expanding on either side of the Lisbeth River, a war broke out. <clears throat> this war, which broke out in 1659, was the start of the first quite Dutch frontier war, which precipitated over a 200 year period of wars of liberation and resistance, and whose consequences saw human beings fanned out across southern Africa in exile, running away from massacre, and unfortunately, it resulted in the today's still unrecognized genocide of the Cape South and the fact that many indigenous animals were can hunted to extinction. Yet in spite of these heritage acknowledgements, Amazon.com has forged ahead with concrete blocks and bulldozers together with Lisbeth Leisure Property Trust, which is the private developer that this 14.8 hectare piece of land belongs to, and it is part of a broader sensitive area called the Two Rivers Urban Park, which is already protected by a number of environmental policies that the city of Cape Town and the Western Cape government have allowed for the destruction of the site plane in order to accommodate Amazon.com's headquarters. It is a place that also marks the history of entanglement between oppressor and oppressed, and it is why that this particular precinct has been nominated and earmarked for a very necessary Truth and Reconciliation Commission for the San and Khoi, which will deal with issues around land disposition, genocide, ethnocide, linguicide, forced removals, loss of culture, and the fact that the descendant communities of the San and Khoi today are relegated in the concrete jungles of the Cape Flats, who have been divorced from the indigenous language, which hundreds of years ago was made illegal. And those who wanted to speak the language were subjected to very brutal forms of colonial punishment, such as the removal of front teeth to prevent the clicking. So what we have seen since 2021, when we started litigation against the development, and just for the context of everybody present, we have been fighting against the proposals of this development since 20, end of 2017, 20, and when the Western Cape government, the city of Cape Town, and the developer refused to acknowledge the fact that the proposal was completely inappropriate, both in terms of scale and also in terms of its location, 
um, once the approvals and green lights were given for the rezoning plus an approval of the environmental assessment, despite the fact that the city's own environmental department had rejected the environmental assessment, despite the fact that the provincial government's own heritage authority rejected the heritage assessments that came in by the developer, um, these were both approved by political courts. So we have entered into litigation, and thus far, the high courts have stood strong in terms of holding up our arguments against the development. Deputy President Judge Goliath issued a groundbreaking precedent decision that stated that the will of Indigenous communities, that the consent and that what they hold sacred cannot be trumped by the economic factor. Today we are sitting with about 10 cases in court. Her verdict had been challenged by four different Supreme Court of Appeals. Human rights defenders, as well as leadership within the traditional structures and civic structures, have been subjected to, to smear, to vitriolic slander campaigns, to physical threats, and an environment of massive safety concerns has now become the norm. This uh, kind of intimidation is not alien to people who wish to speak truth to power, but it has become of major concern to all of us that the divide and conquer mechanisms that are also being deployed are seeing Koi groups and African groups fight against one another as the developer <clears throat> has needed to accrue a bastion of indigenous people to support their claims. Today, on behalf of the Gori Naikona and of many of the Tam traditional San and Koi houses who are with us in court in a ferocious uh, battle of litigation, we ask for your support and we ask for the right kind of diplomatic pressure to be put on our government and to be put on the city of Cape Town and the Western Cape government to immediately stop what is a serious act of heritage crime, of heritage criminal behavior, of the desecration of something that is sacred to all South Africans, and to investigate how is it possible that a multinational corporation like Amazon is allowed to infringe these kinds of laws locally and also internationally in as far as the Paris Agreement is concerned in relation to climate change mitigation. And just to conclude, that until the San and Koi are placed in the center of the discussion, the idea of an African Renaissance will always remain at the nascent stage. On behalf of uh, the Thai Restorative Justice Forum, the Leeds Big Action Campaign, the San and Koi communities that are against this particular development, I'd like to say thank you very much. I should go to Kate and